Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magna Nordahl, I'm an ATA captain and instructor. A few days ago, Microsoft launched the ATA 42600 and 72600 for Flight Simulator 2020. Many of you have asked me to provide instruction videos for those uh, aircraft. This has proved to be a challenge for me because I'm not familiar with Flight Simulator. And there are some differences between flying the flight simulator and the real aircraft. So, in a way, I had to learn to fly again. There are hundreds of quirks and features in flight simulator I am not aware of. So, I spent the first days trying to figure out how to present the ATR in the best possible way. Like all airliners, the ATR is designed to be flown by two pilots. And being a single pilot on a computer screen makes this a challenge, for example, during takeoff. The ATR model was launched on 26th of April together with Flight Simulators version 13. The developer team worked very hard to reach that deadline. And the result was a product with some bugs. I started to record videos about how to fly the aircraft from power up to landing. But when I finally had completed the recordings, I was sent to Bangkok for simulator work. So here I am, and just a few days ago, a new version of the ATR was launched. I think this is the version 108. And with that, many of the bugs have been rectified. So that made my videos obsolete. I will make new recordings when I'm coming back to Maldives. Um, but this will take a couple of weeks because I will have a short vacation after the simulator. In the meanwhile, let me introduce the power management selector of the ATR. All aircraft with this type of engine, the Pratt & Whitney 100 series, have a power management selector. But on ATR, this selector is very special, so stay tuned. With the exemption of early ATR variants, ATR aircraft has an electronic engine control, EEC, and electronic propeller control, or what they call propeller electronic control, PEC. After starting the engine, the conditioner is set to auto and it remains there for the rest of the flight, unless you have an emergency. And for takeoff, you set the power lever in a position called a notch. It is marked with this white band. The power lever remains in the notch until you start descend, where you have to reduce your power to avoid overspeed. The power management selector has four positions. The first is TO, takeoff. This gives 100% NP or propeller speed and 90% torque. In case of an engine failure takeoff, the torque is automatically increased to 100% and the propeller of the fed engine is feathered. I have made a video about this. you find the link in the description below. The second position is MCT, Maximum Continuous Thrust. Well, it should be power, because thrust is used for turbofan engines, while we use power on a uh, turboprop. But just for the commonality, we say MCT, because most pilots are already familiar with that. MCT is used in an emergency like engine failure or when encountering a wind shear. It gives 100% NP, propeller speed, and 90.9% torque. Then we have the climb position and cruise. In those positions, NP is reduced to 82%. This reduces propeller noise, especially in the cabin. So when we take off, the power management is in takeoff position and when we're passing acceleration altitude, which is at least 400 feet above the runway, we select climb. After leveling off and reaching cruise speed, we select cruise power, which is slightly less than climb power. Before landing, when we select the landing gear down, we select the power management back to takeoff, just in case we need maximum power in case of a go around. All aircraft with this engine, the Pratt & Whitney 100 series, have a power management selector. But on ATA aircraft it's very special, because it's not one selector, but two. We always move the selectors together. Always. 
and we even call it a the selector. So why does ATI Aircraft have two selectors then? Well, this goes back to the 1984 when they certified the aircraft. The French authority insisted on a power management selector for each engine. So there we are. The power management selectors in the ATR model is very accurate. And you have the option to move both selectors individually or together. I strongly recommend the latter. To check the function, point the cursor of the selector and press and hold the left mouse key. If you read synchronized in this window, you are good. If you read independent, you click the right mouse key and you get synchronized. Then you can release the left key. The best way to move the power management selector is to use the wheel on the mouse. Okay, that's all for this time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.